Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the sunrise with Jesus. Friends, do you live to eat or eat to live? I'm sure we all know the better choice would be to eat in order to live. But guess what? When we eat well, we shall live well. When we eat in style, we shall live in style. And this does not mean we need to master the art of eating, maybe with fingers or with a spoon and fork or with chopstick, but we need to master the art of eating, eating the Jesus way. Jesus came whining and dining. Well, this was the hateful and the false allegation made by the Pharisees and the scribes, the enemies of Jesus, with the sole aim of discrediting the mission of the Son of God. What we know for a fact is that Jesus came to this world with one purpose, and that one purpose was to offer his life for the kingdom of God, to fulfill the mission that his father sent him on. And for this purpose, we know that not even a moment did Jesus hold back for his personal pleasure and purposes. And yet there is an element of truth in what the Pharisees would point out in that there is a stark contrast between John the Baptist and the Lord himself. When John the Baptist launched out on his mission, he would walk away from human society and all human regulations and conditions and social occupations. He would go into the wilderness. And even when the multitudes would gather around him, he would stick to his diet of locusts and honey. But when we look at the Lord, we realize that the Gospels give us a very unmistakably obvious indicator by the fact that there are plenty, plenty of references to banquets and feasts and dining moments in the Gospels. When Jesus spoke of the kingdom of God, the eternal truths, and he spoke of the grandeur and the seriousness and the conditions and the call to the kingdom of God, Jesus most often would use the example of a banquet, of a grand feast, a feast thrown by the rulers. And we also must remember the very first manifestation of the glory of our Lord Jesus when the disciples would come to believe in him was at the wedding feast celebrations at Cana, what would we could translate as a rather secular party moment. When Jesus would make fellowship with his disciples, we often see that a dining is very, very at the center of their friendship and their call. When Matthew, the tax collector, is called, soon after that, we see Jesus at his house for a grand dining event. It was not a simple family event, but you see tax collectors and sinners and maybe even people who have Pharisees right out there in that moment of celebration. We see Jesus through the course of the Gospels dining with Pharisees and dining with tax collectors. Jesus visits the house of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, the chief tax collector, precisely to share a meal with them. And that becomes the moment of salvation for the family of Zacchaeus. We hear of how Jesus is there at the home of Simon the Pharisee, dining again, but teaching great truths on mercy and purity of heart. We see Jesus going to visit his friend Lazarus, Mary and Martha. And we understand the menu was important because the sister of Lazarus is bu busy preparing a grand meal. When Jesus chooses to sign off from his disciples, he makes that occasion a very elaborate Passover meal, which we call as the Last Supper. He chose that we should remember the salvific event of his death and resurrection, 
through the Eucharistic meal, as St. Paul would say, as often as we eat his body and drink his blood, we proclaim the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And finally, friends, Jesus chooses to remain with us in the form of bread. Now, what do we gather from all this? That the whole exercise of dining has a sacred dimension. A very sacred bonding happens at the dining table. So how do you and I ensure that our dining does not lead us to a curse, but our dining becomes a blessing for us? That our dining becomes a moment of healing for the family and in fact has an eternal significance? Well, Jesus shows us the way. And the first is this, let every moment we gather to dine be a reminder to make a space for the great banquet that awaits us. Let us never lose ourselves to gluttony. But on the other hand, let every dining, let every celebration be for us a reminder of the great and wonderful celebration we need to prepare for. Secondly, every dining moment should be a time of thanksgiving. When we eat the food and we relish the taste, let it be an opportunity where we thank those who prepare the meal, but more importantly, thank God who provided us what we have. In fact, thanksgiving is what saves us from gluttony, from being lost in food. Friends, here is where we must know we could either get over obsessed with calories or over obsessed with the taste of the food. In which case we actually lose the entire experience of that meal, which is far more than about the taste buds. And I specify this because very often when the food is not tasty, we could find the food making us unhappy making us unhappy, yes, not only with the food, but with each other. There could be a lot of complaints that the dining table could be a breeding ground for. And that is why the second element of making a meal sacred is to make sure it is a Eucharist. Eucharist means Thanksgiving. And thirdly, let us, though we are living in a very busy world, make some kind of intense preparation so that at least once a day we dine together with the family. We switch off the television, we put aside our mobile phones and we are there in a communion of love. Friends, these are very precious moments when we sit together as a family and we give thanks to God for what is there on our table. And when we do so, making that love of God present in that dining experience, we will realize that our food becomes a blessing for us. Our dining becomes a moment when the kingdom of God, in fact, descends upon our lives. And of course, we know the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but about the righteousness, peace and joy of heaven. So friends, may you have a very blessed breakfast, blessed lunch, blessed dinner and knowing that blessedness is in thanksgiving, in a constant mindfulness that we have a greater banquet awaiting for us and very importantly in a communion of love, being present to one another. I want to give you some principle based on ministry of parenting. Now, if you are not parents, it's okay. You can still use the principles. Amen? You can still use the principles. But let's get into it. I, I, I'm talking to you about heart parenting. Heart parenting. Not just any motivational course parenting, but heart parenting. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy 6, 1 to 12. The Bible says, now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you. Say teach you. Teach. To teach you to observe in the land that you're about to cross into and occupy. This is the commandments that God is asking to teach you. 
and then he goes on to say, so that, teach you. Say teach you again. The purpose of teaching you is so that you, your children, and your children's children may fear the Lord all the days of your life. Say amen. Amen. The promise is for who? For you. Say for me. Tell to your husband, husband for you. You don't want to talk to your husband, huh? <laughs> Tell to your wives, my wife, the promise is for you. Husband also tablet pakai. For you and then for who? For your children and for your children's children. Do you want? Your children's children to be blessed. Do you want your children to be blessed? And you know it starts with who? You. If you are not blessed, your children cannot be blessed and your children's children cannot be blessed. And the key is this. How do you get blessing for your children's children and children? Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Who wants to know? Raise your hands. Yes, praise the Lord. The key is there. So that you, your children, and your children's children may fear the Lord all the days of your life. May fear the Lord. The key is this. So that you will fear the Lord. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. Verse 2. So that you, your children's, your children and your children's children may fear the Lord and keep the decrees of the commandments that I'm commanding you so that your days may be long. Say that, so that your days may be long. Hallelujah. Do you want long days? Long days, not 25, 26 hours, you know, still 24 hours. That means you will live longer. The Bible is telling you, if your children are going to give you stress, your life is going to become short. The Bible says, so that your days may be long. And hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you. Say that, it may go well with you. And so that you may multiply greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey. Do you want to multiply? Hallelujah. God says, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, God alone. You shall, repeat after me, you shall shall. love the Lord your God God. with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might. Keep these words words. that I'm commanding you today in your heart. heart. Where? Where? In your heart. Not in your pocket. Where you keep them? In your heart heart keep these words in your heart teach them to your children and talk about them when you're at home when you are away when you lie down when you rise teach them to your children say that teach Teach what to your children keep the words that I'm commanding you today in your heart keep the word keep the word of God in your heart Tell somebody next to you, keep the word of God in your heart. Tell somebody next to you, don't look at me. Tell somebody next to you. Keep the word of God in your heart. And now look at them and tell them, teach them to your children. How can you teach them to your children if the word of God is not in your heart? Amen. How can you teach them to your children when in your own heart there is no word of God? What is in your heart? Wherever the heart is, there, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also, Jesus said. Say amen. Amen. So if your treasure is Johnny Walker, your heart is on Johnny Walker, what will your children learn? Johnny Walker. Hallelujah, what a revelation. If your heart is on Marlboro cigarettes, your treasure is on Marlboro cigarettes, 
What will your children be? Marlboro cigarettes. Precisely. Where your heart is, there your treasure, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That is why the word of God says, keep them in your heart. Keep what in your heart? The word of God. And teach your children the word of God. Teach them. Bind it in your hand. Teach them. And it goes on to say some very interesting points. Teach them when? Four times. Teach them. When you are at home, say. When you are away. When you lie down. When you rise. Four situations you should teach the word of God. When? Number one. When you are? What are you teaching them when you are at home? Number two. When you are? Away. Teach them the word of God. Number three. When you lie down. What are you teaching them when you are lying down? Are you teaching them the word of God? <laughs> God only knows. When you rise. What are you teaching them? You are supposed to teach them the? The word of God. This is the promise. This is the promise. Benjamin Deserali was two times Prime Minister of Great Britain. And he said, no success in public life can compensate for failure in family life. No success in public life can make up for a failure in family life. That means you can be the richest man in all of Dubai. Your money, your pocket is full of money. But if your marriage is a failure, you are a failure. Do you get it? Do you get it? You can have the biggest house in all of Kerala. And every Malayali looking at you is jealous of you. But if your marriage is down the drain, you are a failure. Because when you walk with the Lord, everything, all of your needs will be met. If you are having lack in your life, you need to check. Something is wrong. What will make you happy? A family that is right before God. Say amen. amen.
every promise fulfilled promises of healing promises lord of your presence promise of fullness of life lord we turn our eyes to you jesus turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face the kingdom lord the kingdom of god where your presence is so strong to deliver us from any deception of the enemy lord turn your thoughts upon jesus drink deep of this comforting love ourselves from everything else of this world and just seek you Lord and find you prayed psalm 51 verse 6 to 13 behold thou desirest truth in the inward being therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart purge me with his soap and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow fill me with joy and gladness let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. 
Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me, Lord. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways and sinners will return to thee. Lord, in this time, we want to reach out to you. As you said through prophet Isaiah, Lord, if you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. Through prophet Jeremiah, also you tell us, Jeremiah 29, 13, if you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. And today, Lord, allow us to find you. Lord, as we search for your presence, O oh God, Take our lives and lead us on. Lord, you have our hearts as we surrender them to you today. And we will search for yours, Lord. Let this be a sacrifice of our surrender to you in adoration, in Lord joy. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 3, he's telling us what he is to us. We may not fully realize this, what God is to us and therefore He declares to us. He says, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, exactly. In the areas in your life where you seem to be drowning, in the areas where you are relentlessly beaten time and time again, where you seem to be falling again and again. There could be a pattern of sin that always dogs you. There could be some appetite within you, some inclination of your flesh that always seems to betray you. So the Lord is saying, do not fear. The moment we turn to our God, the moment we look at the face of our Redeemer, our Saviour, this is what God is telling us, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. And He's giving us His Spirit that He's pouring upon us and anointing us from above that we will not be drowned. Holy Spirit, pour out your love. Holy Spirit, pour out your love. Anoint us from Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine.
The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust, CD account number 0402231000014, HDFC Bank, Chalakudi Branch, IFSC Code, HDFC 0000402 and email the details to divineretreatcenter at gmail.com.